to take the edge off like i mentioned you can set it to practice if you like so you don't feel the pressure of like oh i'm logging a leaderboard i know that can be a little intimidating for some but once you see a leaderboard okay you got yourself a high score you can take a look and compare yourself to how you're doing with others and you know not an overall bad performance just for doing these all back to back i would say how much time you need to spend on these scenarios would vary depending on your overall goals it's kind of like when you're working out at a gym right you need to compare and ask yourself how much time do i need to spend to really achieve the results I'm looking for. I always recommend somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes. Each of these scenarios takes about a minute apiece. So we have five here. These are the new tracking scenarios. And just kind of recap the ones that we've already looked at. You're, you're looking at Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Start Track, and Reactive Track. So we got a lot here. And these are all one minute apiece. And if you did them all three, you know, a total of three times, and that would equate to a total of 15 minutes. At that point, when you hop in game, you should feel quite warm up warmed up and pretty positive as you hopped into your games and that's really the whole point point. and when you start to kind of work on certain movements so if we look at these scenarios and we were to ask ourselves which one did i struggle with i almost want to say arc track was probably the one i struggled with the most micro start track i think if i had a good day that seemed to be a scenario that i that i started taking more seriously on the leaderboards just because i was really popping off with it and then because i changed my sensitivity start track excuse me star track Probably one that, yeah, overall that I would just need to, to spend a lot more time just because, it, it, again, why it's called Star Trek is as you can tell, kind of goes in a star shape and it's more linear. I, I think overall that was probably my weakest scenario. So kind of assess and really reflect and be be critical of yourself, but not too harsh because you know that you're, you're working to improve and that's the overall goal. So what we're going to go through next are the Rainbow Six Siege scenarios. What's really great about Aim Lab, which I really enjoy, is the variety that you see in a lot of the scenarios. It's not just grid shot. I know grid shot is very, very popular, but you can see a lot of improvement from switching things up, things you're not used to. Even if Rainbow Six Siege is not your main game, there is so much to learn in terms of accuracy and overall improvement. So in this scenario that you're looking at, this is where C4s get thrown at you periodically. This will help on your precision and accuracy to help you improve your aim. Let's say you don't even play Rainbow Six Siege. There's a lot of applications for this, whether you're shooting something that may be running towards you or just trying to make sure that you're accurate. You don't want it to blow up in front of you. And that's the overall well, exercise and goal. So if you miss, it's perfectly fine. You get more points if you hit it while it's in the air. Just the goal is for it to not to blow up. You can move your character in-game if you like. In this case, I'm going to have him stay still until I don't need to. Just kind of hold the angle. But if you want to throw yourself off, you can kind of jiggle peek left and right. You can kind of jiggle peek left and right. Again, don't be turned off if you don't play Rainbow Six Siege. Because looking to various small targets of various shapes at various angles can be very beneficial to improving your aim. Even if Rainbow Six Siege isn't even my main game, I, w I still actually thoroughly enjoy the scenario and definitely learned a lot from it. I always notice that I seem to be better when the targets are moving right to left rather than left to right. So, excuse me, when they're going left to right, I seem to excel more, but if they're going right to left... I struggled a bit more. That's just my own assessment. And you can also see from insights where you struggle the most. If you were to do the scenario again, definitely work on continuing to improve, work on those flick shots, try to have it flick. And if you need to, then you can move your character in the scenario if you like. You don't need to, you don't have to, but it, you know, it's always there as an option for you if you'd like. And let's discuss what, and I'm going to switch to one of these that is really, really cool. Maybe that's why you're watching this video. Maybe that's why you're hopping into Aim Lab. It's perfectly fine. This is why we have these exercises and these utilities to help you improve. This is very popular. You've probably seen a lot of YouTube scenarios where somebody will breach a building and kind of work their way in. So while this is labeled as Rainbow Six Siege, this is this is such a cool scenario. I really, really like this one. I think it taught it taught me the most so far. Also, there's one about memory where I was definitely struggling with. But of course you move, and they shoot back if you take a little bit too long. So cutting corners and slicing the pie is very important. You've probably seen that a lot in Valorant as you cut, and you want to stop your movement and take your shot. And with a scenario, you want to keep moving as fast as possible. 
And as you continue to improve, you start to maximize on your movement and get faster and faster. And it's okay if you struggle a little bit. That's the whole point. There's only so many areas that an enemy can be. I, I understand this from Apex Legends. So if, you do, if you're not used to the overall map and you don't know where all the targets are, that's perfectly fine. And talking when you do scenarios, like I mentioned, it's not always the easiest thing. Sometimes that's why you hear people so quiet. You got to watch your back in various angles. That's why I got hit here. It's a good example of not knowing where enemies are. But remember, whenever you enter the room, there's only so many locations that they're going to be at. It's called Slice in the Pie, and this is such a great demonstration. In fact, it, makes me, it inspires me to make my own YouTube video on this specifically just because it's so... It's it's honestly a lot. Of, I can see myself popping in music and enjoying the scenario just endlessly, and you can hold shift to start to run a bit more. The goal is to keep... And we're going to do this one again as we get a little faster. I breached incorrectly there. It's cutting, cutting the angle and slicing the pie. Slicing the pie... You know, I'm, I'm going to do this scenario again with you guys and really talk through it. So slicing the pie is whenever you cut an angle, think of, your, think of your field of view like a pie, like right in front of you, if you can just imagine that for me. And as you cut it, think of this as like a, like a pie and you keep going a little more degree, a little more degree, and you cut the pie. And remember your hitbox when you go up and down is super small. So as you keep moving through, and this, this incorporates everything that you've learned in terms of your overall aim and accuracy. Like, you can understand the concept, but as you keep doing it, you need to learn and continue to get better and better and better so you know where enemies are at. So if we breach again, I'm going to restart the scenario and talk through this. This is, this is just so... It's awesome that Aimline put this in. I think this is fantastic, and it really, really teaches. So if you, there's only so many areas that an enemy can be, and if you don't stand still, then you don't get the shot. So remember, if you know an enemy could be here, and you cut the angles, knowing where they're most likely going to be at, you start to, it starts to rely less on aim, and more on predicting an enemy and where they're going to be. Prediction is really key. And so let's restart this and let's just try to zip through this as quick as possible so you can see the whole thing. The goal is to keep running through the map as fast as possible. And these enemies are predetermined, but if you get so used to cutting the angles and going through various motions, you start to really speed up. Even as you see me going through this, because I know where the enemies are, you really start to speed up your overall aim. And your overall accuracy, and of course they punish you and shoot you back if you take a little too long, which we did in that scenario. So remember to keep peeking, go through this as quick as possible. And it's pretty straightforward where you need to go. There's areas that I need to check. I need to get better about checking. Too much Apex Legends, everyone always around you. You need to play a lot smarter. But this is this is why we do this. This is this is literally why we do this. Where you're not looking at somebody who's perfect. Where I've had I have a lot of strengths, but I also have a lot of weaknesses, and that's perfectly fine. If I stood there actually in game, I definitely would have been dead. But we learn, right? We get better. You try to do this on a timer. I know CSGO has a ton of these back in the day. But I, what I like about the fact that it lives in Aim Lab is that you can change your sensitivity and it feels just a lot more universal. So the application makes a whole lot more sense. And then you're right back at the start. And you just kind of rush right through again. So this says a high score. I know I always put all these in. Let's see, what is the average score that we see on this? For Siege Entry, I don't think I was able to get this on the leaderboard. But can always continue to do better and keep rinsing and repeating. And if we did it one more time, I just kind of want to do it one more time for exercise sake. This is, this is such a good one. And when we go into the Creator Studio... This is going to be a good segue to everything that we talk about from the Creator Studio standpoint. It's kind of why I'm spending a little bit more time on it. And I feel like it's one of my weaknesses. So it, when I'm just kind of generally enjoying kind of going through this, this, this is where you find your passion and where you find things that you need to work on. Because you're keeping your crosshairs at head level as well as you're doing this, which is great.
don't know why this hall always trips me up as if there's going to be three there. It's okay if you're not perfect. Remember that as you're doing this. Even if you're super good, try to beat the score. Try to hop in. Try to do better. Try to be better. That's the overall goal. As long as you're motivated and hop in and you want to be better, then I feel like I did inspire somebody today. Remember, enemies are always going to be in the strangest spots. Trust me, playing Apex Legends, people are always in the weirdest spots. But they start to become predictable over time. And that's part of the magic of things. If you start to kind of think outside the box of where enemies could or could not be, then you've done half of the work, right? And this applies to various games. So it, it, just think of this as opening your mind and thinking a little bit more broad on where enemies can place themselves. So we've, we've already done better. That's already better. Just imagine if we did this for another, let's say, 30 minutes, how much I would improve and how much this would translate in-game. I'm, I'm probably, after I, I finish this, this big video, I'm probably going to spend the next couple hours on this. That was a whole lot of fun. I know that might seem lame, but pop in some music, enjoy yourself, find that point of zen, and start to really grind these out. You can be one of the best aimers in the world. I've seen some people who are cracked out of their mind with some of the best aim in the world, but you, when they apply different things such as movement, such as memory, which is the next one, you're gonna see me really slip up. It's not gonna be fun. It's gonna be very interesting, but that's why we do these things. You know what, let's let's go with something a little easier. Let's do the uh, audio version where you hear the, the audio, spatial audio. This is really good whenever you try to decipher where audio is. I'm going to give you a guide to this one. This one's going to be very beneficial to really help you out. Because there's two types of audio that you'll hear. When it sounds a little closer, it almost it's two clicks away. So this one's really close on the right, close on the left. A little louder. Kind of slipped a little louder. There we go. Left. Okay, let's do this one again. I'm going to reset. You really got to turn your headphones up. I'm going to reset. You really got to turn your headphones up. I'm going to turn my headphones up because I had them a little low. It's kind of hard for me to decipher. In terms of headsets, what you want to do is have one that has enough bass. This is why some pros will use headphones so they can kind of have the bass with it. I happen to be using a headset at the moment, but that's the reason why some pros will use headphones because it adds a bass so you can kind of hear the difference. The distance kind of helps in terms of bass and the treble. And it's a lot more dramatic. It's why when you utilize various peripherals, sometimes having a highlighted bass and trouble, just being very dramatic is better for video games, but maybe not as good for a movie. Just as an example. So let's explain what happened there as I started getting used to the sound effects. This happens as you start to get used. What you're training your, your brain and your hand, all the hand-eye coordination, everything, muscle control, mouse control, is when you heard the target was closer either to the right or left, and you will have to turn up your audio to be able to really tell the difference here, is it has a bit higher of a ping, and whenever it's further away, it has a bit more bass to it. That's how I decipher it. That's how I know what target's hitting me. I'm going to do this one again. And I'm going to talk through it best I can as you're aiming, which is it's not the easiest thing in the world, believe it or not. I challenge you to try having a conversation when you're trying to hear it, and I'll try to let you know if I get it right or wrong. Two away. Right. 
two away. This one was close left. Two away to the left. One away to the left. One away to the right. Two away to the left. Two away to the right. One to the left. One to the right. Two to the right. One to the left. One to the right. This is hard to talk to, actually, believe it or not. I didn't wasn't listening as well to that one. I'm sorry. But you get the point. One to the left. I didn't hear that one. There we go. One to the left. It's to the right. Two to the to the left. To the left. There we go. We're back on track with the audio. It kind of shows you how important game sound is, doesn't it? I would literally lift my headset for a second there to get an itch, and then I completely am like lost in where I'm at. That one was not very good, but we were trying to talk through it, and it's a lot more challenging than you realize. <laughs> it's like trying to read a book out loud, but at one point, I even had an itch. I know you can't see me, but you lift your headset for just a second. It's why when we play competitive games of how important this stuff is and how much of a difference it can make, even your headset and audio, just to be able to decipher where an enemy is at, if you heard a shot, to be able to flick to that general direction and understand the difference in the audio. It makes such a big difference because... I can flick back and forth at, the, at a pretty fast pace, but I'm definitely going to slow down if I have other things going on where I have to calm and say, this person is low, he's over by heaven's side, and, you know, Valorant comms, or he's cracked, he's super low, Octane just used his jump pad to get away, or you're trying to calm in Rainbow Six Siege, all of those things add up. They really, really do, and it's why you do these type of exercises. They're very unique to aim but I think they're really cool. Okay, let's go to the main screen, and let us do detection shot this one's very diff this one's pretty challenging but this will teach you to really calibrate your monitor it's like finding waldo and trying to aim as fast as possible to it there are games that have uh, that are very difficult when it comes to visibility and if the game is extremely difficult visibility wise and perhaps you need to change your your color monitor or the color calibration anything that kind of changed it up it's why benq has certain things like asus alienware it doesn't matter really the brand i'm just kind of throwing them out there giving examples but you would have to find the target, and if it's gray to gray, seeing where the target is at. I don't even see it here at the start. I've done the, there we go. Once you kind of get into a groove and your eyes settle in on it, trust me, you start to see it. I guarantee you guys probably don't see these at the start either. But once your, guy, once your eyes adjust, it's like adjusting to the dark. Once you see it enough, you know what to look for. Like at first when I was looking at this, I had no idea what I was looking at. There it is. But your eyes will adjust and see the target. So if you're trying to hit something really far away. I got this question a lot in Battlefield. Way back when. I didn't see that when I was trying to tell a story. Way back when we're, when I was playing Battlefield and you would try to see. How did you see that guy a mile away? How did you see his head? Well, over time, you, one, you start to predict where enemies are at. And I can't find where's Waldo at the moment. It's kind of embarrassing. But then again, I'm trying to tell you a story of how Battlefield works. The visibility is really hard and really low. You zoom and you start to know what a head, head looks like. But this will teach you what that is. It takes some concentration. You shouldn't really talk when you're doing this. Don't do what I do. Do as they say, not as I do. So that uh, scenario is a bit of a, a struggle. But really fun. I really enjoy that one. It, it it just reminds me of the Battlefield days. It really does of trying to hit things and you can barely see them in the shrubbery. Specifically when it comes to like Battlefield 5, but I really enjoyed it for Battlefield 4, but your eyes really adjust to it. And after doing that for like an hour or two, you'll just start to pop off in your overall score. And I know that detection to break top 100, I believe, is around 40,000. We had 32,000 there. So, I mean, if we played this, a, you know, a couple more times, it would easily really pop off. And let's say you're struggling. Don't worry, you'll get there. Just kind of stick with it. This one, it, I could be kind of avoiding it. I'm not very good at it. I was doing it earlier. I don't know why. I, I, I love the... It's it's over here in custom. I did this one a whole lot. I think it was decision shot ultimate. I did this one a whole lot. But I feel like this one takes it to a whole another level because all the colors are the same. Now I understand listen to you you know if you you have a situation perhaps where you might be colorblind, it's understandable. You, you know, do your best to kind of calibrate. Um and if it's a weak spot then 
just know it's a weak spot and just counteract it with with as many other aspects of aim as humanly possible because even with with these colors they're so similar you try to see what's different so we take a look at the colors what changed one on the bottom left so what colors changed i think it was the left one yeah and it gets harder as you keep doing it you have to memorize it i think it was one on the bottom right nope okay and it kind of reverts back as the colors that are more prominent are the ones that I'm always able to to memorize. So that one's easy. Doing better than I did last time, I think. This one changed. N okay. Respectable. I respect it. So they're all, they're all almost gray. I hope this is a dramatic change. Okay. Nope. All right. No. Nope. <laughs> this is one I definitely need to practice on and keep working on. Again, it's like playing Where's Waldo. I know some of them multiple change, but. I, I, I actually have no idea. I, I focus too much on the left side of the screen when I should have focused on the right, too. I, kinda, I, I focused on the big ones there. Okay, I know I got that one wrong. That's okay. Well, that makes me question a whole lot about my life. But that's why we have these here. And that's why we work on them to get better, right? So I would definitely need to uh, probably spend a lot more time on this to kind of tell the difference. Especially, this is great when you're scanning the horizon and trying to look for variances. When you're playing a battle royale such as Fortnite, Apex, Player Unknown, and you're trying to make sure if you see a variance, if there's something running across the screen, you remembered where everything was at on the screen. But if something changes and you you realize after flicking right back to the location there was a change, you know exactly where to flick through flick to because you know that something changed and rainbow six siege is really heavy on that it's probably why i'm not very good at this scenario specifically because rainbow six siege the palette can be very dark and you have to look for very variances to make sure if you see something so this is a really great scenario for any of those that are practicing rainbow six siege it really does test you it's really really strong so what we're going to do now we've gone through quite a bit of scenarios let's recap we did siege entry siege c4 arc Siege Capacity, Siege Detection Shot, and Siege Audio Spatial 45. And then for the tracking scenarios, we did Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Star Track, and micro, or Reactive Track. So a lot of scenarios. There's so much to learn here. So as we mentioned before, what we're going to cover now and kind of discuss, we're going to review most of the Creator Studio stuff. We're going to go through the Creator Studio and really highlight why the Creator Studio is so beneficial because you have all these great scenarios. But listen... Remember at a gym, you start to create your own regimen of what works for you. I know as personally as starting to get back into working out and out again, you really start to focus in on what works for you and then what doesn't, right? So if you realize this machine may not help you as much, maybe you might kind of go to free weights and start to create your own exercise to isolate a muscle. And that's what the Creator Studio is all about. So let's go into the Creator Studio and let's start building. Let's review some of the maps because I think they're also really cool, the maps. I spent a lot of time on them and how true to life they are. Because we're going to create a flicking scenario and also tracking scenario from scratch. But I also want all of you guys to see by putting bots in various locations how easy it is just to put a bot from a template. Let's go from the template and let's look at bind. And we're going to walk around. We're just going to walk around and take a look at it. And showed in real time and how true to life this is for those that we were we were just kind of on one of these earlier but just taking a look at bind taking a look how it looks you can sprint you can run through you can set the bots however you like you cut corners this should look very familiar and you should know the game see it whenever you watch tournaments all the time so if you work you can set bots to various spots you can literally set a bot that comes here and has a waypoint here which we'll talk about in just a moment you can put bots in various areas. Look, there's heaven side, like we were referencing just a minute ago. If you run it all the way to the back, there is a bot here that just kind of auto spawns, and then boom, it's done. But it doesn't have to be done, because let's let's just go through the whole map here. Really, it just wanted to get your wheels turning as you start to 
think about where you can play spots to try to practice. Remember I, I talked about isolating the muscles, right? So maybe there's a point in this map. This is why this is so much better than just doing CSGO bots or anything of that nature, is that let's say you know this this spot over here at this split, and you know, I know there's like that supposed to be that teleport here. But let's say at this split you always get shot at this angle, and this is a really hard shot for you. Well, you could technically put a jumping bot right here. All right, I'm gonna put a jumping bot right here, and you can see the other point of view from over here. This gets your gets your mind going, and that's really the beauty behind it. And you can see that it really has a full side of the size of the side of the map. There's a lot of thought and detail that went into this to really kind of get it to to actual. And that's a copy of Bind. I think this is really great. And when we talk about adding a flick scenario and tracking scenario, I'm gonna put it in just a raw environment to really get you just imagining what you can put here. So I'm going to return to the editor, and I want to highlight two more maps for you. We're going to do Valhaven next. Okay. So I'm just going to play and hop in here, and then we're going to go through all of the tools. We're going to go through... Just about all of them. I'm going to keep it very basic so you don't feel overwhelmed. But I, again, the, the whole reason why I'm showing the maps first because you realize how much play potential you have. And you don't have to make a map. You don't have to. You don't have to make a map, technically. We should recognize... Um, this as well. See, there's a lot more bots here. See how it gets your mind going. It gets you thinking about things. This is a long shot. I can't tell you how many times you've seen an op at this angle, right? And as you kind of bounce around, you kind of see the map from various points. Because, you know, whenever you start, this is, this is you know, a very popular spot. So if you put a bot that just kept coming through right here and you would go yoink, 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 yoink. It would be very, very beneficial to proving your aim, especially whenever you realize what you have issues with in terms of cutting the corners. And there's already some bots in some predetermined spots already. Just kind of get your mind going. And it's okay if you miss shots. Don't worry too much about that. I know there's a bot up here that's kind of by default. Let me go all the way back down. And let's talk about... There he is. That's the one I was referencing. And there's this guy. And let's showcase one more map. Because then we're going to get into the crater. And there he is. He's up top. Told you. I knew he was there. It's going through this quite a bit. Quite extensively going through all of this stuff. This is, this is, this is the goods. This is the meat and potatoes giving you fu full functionality of the gym and knowing that you can pretty much do whatever whatever you want. Let's go from a template again. Let's go from a Rainbow Six Siege map. You might recognize this one, actually. I mean, you should, especially if you play Rainbow Six Siege. They pick the most iconic maps, which is really cool. Recognize where various targets and everyone goes, right? Kind of get your head spinning of where... If you have a point in the map that you always seem to get eliminated from or you really struggle with, this is going to be where you start to set up the bots and move them. You know, maybe not move them towards a spawn. You know, you, maybe that's where not enemies are going to be. But perhaps you want to move them into smarter locations and kind of kind of play around with them. But we're going to strip this down now to bare basics. So now that you've kind of seen... Just realize the potential seeing what a finished product can look like. And we're going to go really, really basic with this. So don't worry about feeling overwhelmed thinking that you have to create some sort of masterpiece like this. Because I am no masterpiece creator myself. But I, I at least can teach you some of the basics so you can hop in here and have yourself some fun. Right? And that's really going to be the, the focus. Okay. So let's go. Let's create a tracking scenario. We're going to do something from scratch. Just so you kind of get the overall tools and get to have some fun. Because once you over, once you understand the basic tools... Realize you can move any of those bots and hit play just like I did there and then hop in and have some fun There's also a video guide that aim lab has it is very helpful. I recommend the one that it mentions with setting up the bots It might be a little overwhelming for you to place a lot of stuff in various areas It starts to maybe reference roller coaster typhoon But just kind of get right into it and just set a bot down and then just understand the power that you have which is what we're gonna do right now Let's get into it. Let's build a tracking scenario Now I'm going to give you some quick tips. I'm going to call this tracking scenario. 
and then we're gonna talk about the custom guns that you have because you can change them up, which is really cool. So I'm gonna create this level. I'm gonna use this train pattern and there's a reason why I'm doing that. I like the train pattern and then if you hold right mouse click and then you kind of fly up in the air with 